welcome to The Rob Burgess Show. I'm, of course, your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 185th episode, our returning guest is Jonathan Fowler. This is Jonathan's 56th appearance on the podcast. For a detailed list, check the show notes. Jonathan graduated with a BA in history from Indiana University in 2006. He is an unabashed left-wing political junkie. He has lived and worked in South Korea for over 10 years, trying to help the citizens of that great nation hopefully talk pretty one day. A quick programming note. This episode was recorded last Monday before Democrats John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock won the two Georgia Senate seats on Tuesday before an armed insurrection stormed the Capitol at the direction of President Donald Trump on Wednesday before Trump was banned from every major social media platform on Friday, and before House Democrats drafted articles of impeachment over the weekend. We will be certain to discuss all that during a future episode. And now, on to the show. Hey, how's it going? Oh, doing okay. I'm on zombie patrol over here. Zombie patrol? (laughs) (laughs) Remember what that means? Oh yeah. Well, are, are fire alarms allowed over there? <laughs> uh, I'm, well, I've got a, I've got a. No comment, TV's right? TVs here. Oh bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah, how's it going there? Oh, pretty good. Just in the middle of uh, work day here on Monday, so uh, trying to concentrate while our democracy is under attack. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, Bob. Yeah. You're working in the uh, media industry. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, we got about 16 more days to see if this fucking. Uh, oh, there goes zombie drill. Um, hey, Chad, is there a way you can change your audio settings or something? Hang on, let me. Uh, is this better? Yes, much better. Okay, sorry. I was kind of putting socks on there. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, well, you're trying to see if democracy is going to survive and things are going well. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> Have you listened to the uh, the Georgia call? I listened to the whole thing this morning, all hour and two minutes or whatever. We have won this election in Georgia based on all of this. And there's, there's nothing wrong with, with saying that, Brad. You know, I mean, having, the, having a correct – the people of Georgia are angry. And these numbers are going to be repeated on Monday night, along with others that we're going to have by that time, which are much more substantial even. And the people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. Now... Do you think it's possible that they uh, shredded ballots in uh, Fulton County? Because that's what the rumor is. And also that Dominion took out machines. Uh, That Dominion is really moving fast to get rid of their uh, machinery. Do you know anything about that? Because that's illegal. No, Ryan Germany. No, Dominion is not. um, Moved any machinery out of Fulton County. We're having. Well, but no, but but have they moved? Have they? Have they moved the inner parts of the machines and replaced them with other parts? No. You sure, Ryan? I'm sure. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I no you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have you don't have not even close. You got you're off by hundreds of thousands of votes. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a, you know, that's a criminal, that's a criminal offense, and and you know you can't let that happen. That's that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyers. That's a big risk, but they are shredding ballots, in my opinion, based on what I've heard, and they are removing machinery, uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can both of which are criminal fines, and you can't let it happen, and you are letting it happen. You know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, 
because we won the state. So, so tell me, Brad, what are we going to do? We won the election, and it's not fair to take it away from us like this. And it's going to be very costly in many ways. And I think you have to say that you're going to re-examine it, and you can re-examine it, but, but re-examine it with people that want to find answers, not people that don't want to find answers. Uh, for instance, I'm hearing Ryan, and he's probably, I'm sure, a great lawyer and everything, but he's making statements about those ballots that he doesn't know. But he's making them with such, he, he did make them with surety, but now I think he's less sure, because the answer is they all went to Biden. And that alone wins us the election by a lot. You know, so. Mr. President, um, you have people that submit information, and we have our people that submit information, and then it comes before the court, and the court then has to make a determination. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. Well, under law, you're not allowed to give faulty election results, okay? You're not allowed to do that, and that's what you've done. This is a faulty election result. And honestly, this should go very fast. You should meet tomorrow because you have a big election election coming up, and because of what you've done to the president, you know, the people of, of uh, Georgia know that this was a scam. And because of what you've done to the president, a lot of people aren't going out to vote. And a lot of Republicans are going to vote negative because they hate what you did to the president. Okay? They hate it. And they're going to vote. And if you would be respected, if really respected, if this thing could be straightened out before the election. You have a big election coming up on Tuesday. Jesus Christ. If this guy is not, like, charged with something after this, you know, after the after 16 days then you really have to question if we even have a country anymore i know yeah and the other thing is i just saw that he's apparently booking flights now to leave the country the day of the inauguration <laughs> like he may be yeah. escaping to ireland maybe because i guess he's got a golf course there or something or scotland or something <laughs> yeah we'll see if uh the economic collapse or global warming allow that to continue to operate. Maybe that's just a stopover before he gets to Russia or something. I don't know. The one thing I would say, like as frustrating as it would be if he got away and like disappeared overseas somewhere and got free and clear of American law enforcement and debt collectors. Mm -hmm. um, the fun part of that would be that everybody who's defended him would have to eat crow for like indefinitely. <laughs> And then there'd be no excuse like, oh, you're still defending Trump. Well, why doesn't he come back to America then, huh? <laughs> you know, it would be like there'd be no defense. He's but in a yeah, long he's distance. Criminal. He's in a long distance relationship with America. He loves us from afar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not fair, man. The, You know, the, uh, the liberals are prosecuting him. He couldn't even, he's an, as an American, he couldn't even live in America anymore because liberals are so hard on him. <laughs> Right. That's that's how bad it's gotten for him. Even a true patriot like Donald Trump has to reside in Moscow now under the protection <laughs> of Vladimir Putin just to, you know, freedom. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that 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 phone call, I mean, in any other time in America, it would be that would be the end. And the really frustrating thing about it is that we we just have so much moralizing. We have so many people saying, "Oh my goodness! Oh, can you believe it? Oh, it's so disgraceful! Oh, it's like somebody do something about it, you know? <laughs> Arrest him, <laughs> charge him, <laughs> indict him, subpoena him, like you know, uh, impeach him again. I don't, you know, do something. Yeah. No, you know, as much moralizing as people do, it's like nobody's going to do anything for you. Somebody has to do something. Yeah. Well, and I just saw a quote, us, you know, we're citizens. Yeah. What the hell do you want us to do? You want to take us, us to take up arms and go out there and you can call us a terrorist? No, mm -hmm. somebody in power has got to do something instead of, you know, this constant. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the norms. Oh, yeah. Just let, well, you know, I just saw uh, Hakeem Jeffries. I guess he's pretty high up in the House Democratic leadership saying that uh, they're not going to impeach him over this because they're looking forward, not back. <laughs> I have not viewed the transcript. We're not looking backward. We're looking forward to the inauguration of Joe Biden on January 20th. 
and it's like, well, look forward to this happening again more from the GOP because they're going to what they're going to take away from this. That these no kinds of Democrats, these are the people, you know. I have less respect for these kinds of Democrats than I do for the Republicans. Mm. You know, these are the ones who are going to cost us our country. The people who are like, oh, well, you know, we're going to, you know, cross the aisle and we're going to, you know, look forward, not backwards. And, you know, we're, we don't need to think about Donald Trump. Donald Trump's not important anymore. You know, if you really mm -hmm. think about it like, no, yeah. people for once in your goddamn life, hold a Republican accountable for something. Yeah. yeah. Act like they <laughs> would. If this was a Democratic president. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. That's 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 literally what it's going to take. I'm entirely, entirely certain that I'm more certain of this than I've been of many, many, many things. America is not going to work again until Republicans get held accountable for this kind of shit. Mm hmm. Well, they're just going to keep popping back up. And, you know, we've we've seen the. uh heirs to the throne uh poke their heads above water here in the last few days and they're just waiting in the wings to use all the tricks and ploys that trump has taught them that are acceptable in this time period you know like they're learning by, from example what you do now they're gonna take that away with them for the future because trump may be gone but what he's created is not gone at all and the ironic thing is if we held him accountable it would be going away Mm. All these Republicans who are trying to hedge right now on Georgia and all this shit, they would all look like a bunch of fools. And, you know, somebody like a Mitt Romney might be able to stick his head above the parapets here if Democrats mm -hmm. would hold Republicans who are pulling this shit accountable. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. we don't hold them accountable, then sure enough, yeah, the Republicans who stood by Trump until the bitter end here are going to be the ones that stick their head up again in four years. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just so sick of Democrats who don't see, you know— the agency that they have in all this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just sick of it. It's like, <laughs> you know, you, you can have an effect on things. You don't just have to sit there and like kind of comment by the sidelines, like, Oh yeah. gosh, isn't it a shame that the Republicans are doing this? And what about, what about uh, our traditions and democracy and America? You know, it's just like, come on, motherfuckers fight for it. Mm hmm. Yeah, be the Democrats that Republicans think you are. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I don't know. It's going to take a different kind of Democrat to do what needs to be done, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, what do you think of uh, Nancy Pelosi getting uh, reelected as House Speaker here today? Yeah, you know, I don't... It's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, and, I mean, there really... Know, the was whole... there anybody running against her this time? I don't think there was, really. I didn't hear no, any I mean, challengers. Jimmy Dore, did you, did you follow the whole... Okay, like, what is uh, going on with Jimmy Dore? Because I keep hearing about this secondhand, but I haven't really been paying attention. He seems like he's gone off his... I mean, I haven't followed him He's been off his rocker several since years, 2016. But like, okay, but what is happening now? He wanted the squad to basically squander any political capital they had and say that they were going to... Uh, either vote against uh, Pelosi or abstain from voting, which would have basically given the Republicans a chance to take over the the uh, the position of the Speaker of the House, even though they don't have a majority. If all the squad had with had withdrawn as Jimmy Dore wanted them to, mm. um, you know, Bob, you got to be tuned into the you know the left wing of the left wing of the party. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> But, yeah, Jimmy Dore has been at war with, like, Sam Cedar, uh, you know, um, a lot of people. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Cenk Uger has been, you know, calling him out even on his on his own channel and on Twitter and everything. And it's pretty crazy because, like, they left under reasonably amicable terms when Jimmy left TYT. But basically at this point, Cenk is calling him out. Uh, mm. David Pakman has been in the mix somehow. Sam Cedar, like I said, um, you know, a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, I just saw a video of him like screaming at these people on like a Zoom call or something. They're not accountable to anyone. I get 10 to 12 million views a month and they won't come out and address my progressive audience. They won't come out and address Bree's audience or Katie's audience or Justin Jackson or you. They are not accountable to us. Benjamin Dixon has also been calling him out pretty strongly. Uh, you know, a lot of people. So, 
And I think like, I mean, I think crystal ball and, um, and what's his name? Uh, Oh God. I can't remember his name now. Uh, Kyle Kalinske, they've been standing Mm. by him, but like pretty much everybody else has cut bait. Mm -hmm. But I've been saying for a long time, Jimmy Dore is toxic. So I feel vindicated. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know who, uh, is staying with him other than a increasingly shrinking group of people that don't know how to compromise or get things done in the real world, I guess, from what I can tell. So, yeah, it's, I mean, they're like, they're like conspiracy theorists, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, they're totally satisfied not to be effective. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know. It's, and the thing is like, as much as like CNN and, you know, MSNBC get criticized for being left wing or whatever. They're not covering this shit. You know, this mm-hmm. is a pretty major thing on the left wing side of the Democratic Party that there's this schism between regular, like, you know, the the AOC wing and the, you know, the and the uh, the uh, I don't know what you even call these wings anymore, but like the, <clears throat> the Jimmy Dore wing, for lack of a better term. But You'll never hear like these names. I mean, aside from AOC, you'll hear her name sometimes, but you won't hear these names of like Jimmy Dore and the the, the schism that's happening right now on CNN or MSNBC. So there's no like there's not mm-hmm. even a pretense that these are left wing organizations. Mm-hmm. So, but it's like who's even liberal enough for Jimmy Jimmy Dore if the squad isn't making the cut? You know what I mean? It's like, not about liberal. It's not about liberal with him. It's not about left wing or what is it know, about progressive or any of that stuff. He says he's the aggressive progressive. It's all it's basically all about who will come on his show. <laughs> and, you know, you know, from what I understand, Bernie Sanders wouldn't come on his show. Okay. Smart move, Bernie. <laughs> and then at that point, Jimmy Dore started shit talking him. Wow. It's like and, you know, and even though he's on this kick about Medicare for all now, he was supporting uh, what's your name? Hawaii. Aloha. Oh, Tulsi. Uh, huh? Tulsi. Tulsi Gabbard. And she wasn't even supporting Medicare for all in the primary. So it's like, you know, what are you talking about? You know, AOC and the squad have to be 110 percent in for Medicare for all in a symbolic move right now. When you were supporting a presidential candidate who would deign to come onto your podcast. But she didn't support Medicare for all at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's just stupid. And I'm really hoping that, like. Plenty of people realize and come to their senses about this guy, about how toxic he is. Hmm. He has a pretty he, big he seems following. seems to fixate on women on the left wing, too. Yeah. Frankly, that's that's a concern. So is his audience just leftover people who got to know him when he was still on TYT? Or? No, I don't know. I think his, his audience is a mixture of, you know, frankly, the, the, the true Bernie or Busters who are serious about Bernie or Bust. You know, mm-hmm. not that we weren't on the line there. Um, right wingers who enjoy hearing a left wing person criticize left wing people mm. <laughs> and almost make excuses for Donald Trump while never, you know, you know, he his I would guess that his his audience is borderline right wing at this point. Mm. Huh. So, yeah, that's something that's going on. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm mad. At, I'm mad at everyone that won't come on my show, Cha. All 538 members of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at them all. Yeah. Come on, guys. This is free publicity. How, how, how dare speak you? Speak your voice to the people. Yeah, you're you're reaching literally tens of people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come yeah. here. You're losing out. <laughs> Bob, I'm telling you, you gotta you gotta monetize. Then they'll, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i was watching i started watching a movie earlier tonight called uh, black bear with aubrey plaza have you heard of this Mm-mm. is it good uh so far it's kind of interesting yeah i, I don't I haven't gotten on too deep into it but it seems okay it's kind of interesting kind of indie mm. what's it about uh a movie director who comes to stay with uh, two people, a husband and wife couple at their cottage on a lake somewhere and like, seems like the Northeast somewhere. Mm. 
I don't know. I don't know to see what it's like though. Yeah. See how it goes. Interesting. Yeah. You seen any good movies or shows lately? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I saw a movie, a uh, time travel movie with Ash about time. Uh, that was I've, good. I've heard of that. I haven't watched it. Oh, yeah, that was good. Um, let's see. Uh, we watched a HBO documentary series about the Nixium cult called uh, The Vow. Yeah, that those was, guys are messed up. That was interesting. Um, let's see. What else do we watch? Uh, we watched that hbo uh series with hugh grant oh, what was that called hbo hugh grant it just came out it was really good um it was like where he was accused of uh murdering someone oh the undoing that's a good one yeah i like that one and uh nicole was kidman he really is accused of murdering someone i've never heard of that no 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 it's it's a <laughs> it's fictional oh okay i was gonna say after the prostitutes, I didn't know. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, his wife in the show is uh, Nicole Kidman. So. Oh, okay. But I'm trying to think what else we saw, but yeah, those are those are some of the ones we got a HBO Plus here for a little while ago. So we've been trying to watch stuff on HBO here. Hmm. Okay. Did you ever finish The Wire? Oh, I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about oh. it. Remember? Oh, vaguely. <laughs> and you've done The Sopranos. Oh yeah. I'm trying to think what else is on HBO. Uh, lately, I've been, I, w- I watched the Mr. Robot. Have you seen that? Mm-mm. I saw you tweeting about it. You said it kind of fell apart near the end. I didn't. I, I, the first season I thought was outstanding. Mm. Um, but the second season, they, they played a, the, a really weird game with the audience. And then... Like in the second half of the third season, they kind of picked up again, and I thought things were going to get back to normal. But then, like the rest of the season, it was just I just got really sick of it. Hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, it's it's one of my unofficial rules of life is that I don't like a show that plays with multiple multiple personalities, like hmm. because I've never seen that in real life, and I feel like that that's just mostly a kind of a dramatic conceit in TV shows and movies. It's more than a real actual thing that happens. Mm. And I think that they like they really tr- doubled and tripled down on the multiple personality aspect of the show a lot. The further in it went, I thought they were going to wrap it up in the second season or something and get back to the main story, but that was the opposite of what happened. So, mm. yeah, I've never it seen was, that show. Yeah, the first season is really good. I recommend it. But like, you, you, you wouldn't be hurting yourself too much if you just stopped at the end of the first season. I think. <laughs> A lot of people disagree, but I think that that's true. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I've always been interested in it, but I've never taken the plunge. But maybe I'll just try the first. Uh, first. Uh, if you watch the season. first couple episodes, you'll get hooked in. Good enough. Mm. I mean, it, it starts off really, really strong, and it has a really, I think, an overall a very strong first season and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I recommend it. But again, like. As it goes on, I, I got really tired of it, so, and I kept oh. waiting for them to do something different. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, Ash and I watched a good movie last night uh, called Run. You ever seen hmm. that? I'm trying to remember who it has. Oh, Sarah Paulson, isn't it? It sounds like one of my ex-girlfriend's names. <laughs> Wait, who's she? Uh, Sarah Paulson, you you know her. While you're looking at that, I I watched the uh, the Midnight Sky last night. Ah, I was really excited about this movie. You know, George Clooney, sci-fi. I'm getting oh, oh, vibes one. already. Yeah, good. Yeah, Kyle Chandler too. You mm, know, nice. Yeah, Coach Taylor. Bright eyes, bushy tails, can't lose. Nope, that's I was not hoping, it. But <laughs> as it worked out, clear, clear eyes, it was full a terrible heart. Terrible movie, I thought. <laughs> terrible movie, you said. I was terrible. I'm sorry to say it was really bad. <laughs> yeah, I talked to uh, Alec, Alec Toombs uh, on Facebook. Do you know him? Do you remember him? Who? who? Alec Toombs. Mm-mm. Some of the people, the Dunhill crew we hung out with there sometimes, I believe. He's, he's a kind of movie reviewer now. Oh. He was working for the Indiana Daily Student back in the day. Ah. He lived above, I think... 
me and John Eubanks. He lived above us a couple floors. Ah. And Brendan, do you remember Brendan and him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, remember him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Brendan and Julie and Alec and them. Yeah, he was one of that crew. So, but he mm. does he does movie reviews and stuff now. So, uh, interesting. Yeah, I may have to put you guys in touch. But yeah, we we talked about it a little bit. We both thought it was quite disappointing. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Sarah Paulson has been on American Horror Story. I think she was. The I watched mom. season one of that, and I really liked it. Mm-hmm. And then I was too scared to ever watch the future ones and stuff. And it's not just a fear. It's like it's also a matter of body horror. Like usually when I'm watching TV shows at my house or something, I'm trying to eat something at the same time. And body horror just makes me lose my appetite. So <laughs> <laughs> I had not mess with the later seasons. I really want to, like, get back into American Horror Story because season one was really, really good. Had some great mm-hmm. moments, I thought. But mm-hmm. I've had a lot of trouble with that. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I thought it was interesting that they, like, change it up every uh, every season. Like, they don't carry anything over. But I, and I almost felt like that kind of hurt it just because I felt like they had to do too much reinventing every time. You know, like, I did. I enjoyed the first season, too. Um, back to, you know, the <laughs> Friday Night Lights, because uh, what's-her-name was in the first season, uh, Tammy Britton. Um, okay. So... I, I mean, I liked I liked the first season, but I thought well, I started watching the second season. I'm just like, I'm not, I'm out, and I can't do this. So, <laughs> too scary, too gross, or what? I don't know. I just felt like they were trying too hard, or yeah, it was too gross, and I don't know, it, just not really. Like, I didn't feel like the story was very good, and I don't know, yeah, it just didn't I, work for me. It's definitely on my list of things that I want to come back to sometime. And yeah, maybe it gets better as it goes on. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, I hear there's like a lot of ups and downs in different seasons with that show. So, but I'm I'm still right. very like I'm very you know American Horror Story curious. <laughs> so, and speaking of Connie Britton, I just watched uh, another movie last night, which was also featuring her, which was uh, Promising Young Woman. Is that it? Promising Young Woman. I don't know that one. Hold on, let me double check. I got it here somewhere. Uh, let me see. Hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. What was it called? Yeah, Promising Young Woman, new movie. Hmm. It's about a woman who her friend was like raped on camera and stuff in university, and so she kind of goes on this revenge rampage and stuff. And it's kind of this I don't know, it's kind of a what can we say, like a Kind of a revenge fantasy kind of, uh, I don't know what we could say, what genre it exactly. Hmm. Uh, I didn't love it. I don't know. It had some interesting parts and stuff and had some interesting sections, but and it was surprising at the end, but it was still kind of like a little bit didactic or something. It's just really telling you what to think. It's, you know, hmm. I didn't feel like it was really um, dealing with the... I, like, I felt like it was, like, kind of like saying that, you know, this complicated issue with a lot of ins and outs and complications and stuff, it's, it's really not that complicated. It's just one way, and you got to look at it that way. And there's hmm. never any, you know, there's never any, you know, conflict with that basic attitude and stuff. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. But it was, it, was, it was interesting. It was a stylistic movie. Interesting. I'll have to check that one out. It looks like it just, uh, well, I guess it came out last year, but... Yeah, a couple of days ago or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. But yeah, I've got a lot of free time on my hands over here. I've been off work since like December 7th or something. Oh, wow. What, what yeah. have you been off work so, so long for? Because the COVID cases in Korea have gone up. They've gone up to 1,000 cases nationwide per day. <laughs> Which only you know, probably sounds like that sounds like <laughs> heaven in America. That sounds like almost back to normal. We'd be coughing but, in each other's mouths in the street if that happened here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, and people would say, you know, Korea is like smaller than America, and that's true. We're much smaller. We're the size of Indiana, but we've only got one sixth the population. So we got like mm. one sixth the population of the United States in a in a country the size of Indiana. So our population density is incredibly high. Uh-huh. 
So, but even so, like you think like 1,000 cases per day in America, what is it like 50,000 or something per day or something now? Wow. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I would like to come back and visit and stuff, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's too dangerous back there right now. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. You might not and, be able to get back into Korea. <laughs> no, I, I definitely have a two week. I mean, I could do it. I could go back there, hang out for a couple of days and come back and spend two weeks waiting. But um, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so I've been off work for a month. We were supposed to restart today, but they extended it another two weeks because even though they've had a lockdown for a month, basically, um, the case number, the cases haven't dropped. We're still over a thousand a day most days, mm. which is kind of unprecedented in Korea so far. So this winter is being really bad. Yeah, so I've I've been just basically staying at home, ordering delivery food, playing games, watching TV and movies, um, not doing a whole lot else. <laughs> Can you do your job over like computer at all, or is it they give you that we, option? Or we could probably institute something like that. We haven't done it yet, though. The boss is a little hesitant right now. Um, I don't know. I think I think the thinking is in two weeks things may be different, and within you know six months, where everybody's going to have the the uh, the antidote anyways, or the vaccine, or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. um, Probably if they extend it, my guess is if they extend it again after these two weeks, we're going to have to seriously, at least by February, we probably got to start thinking about Zoom classes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So but we haven't gone there yet. Yeah. Yeah. So how were the holidays? Oh, they were good. Yeah, we didn't go anywhere or see anybody, but it was fine. Other than that, um, <laughs> sounds like heaven. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so bad. Um, you know, it was uh, it was good to be uh, with the family or whatever, and I think the kids had a good time. Uh, see, uh, Captain got a uh, baby Yoda from the Mandalorian, even though he's never seen any of the Star Wars things, but he loves it. Yeah, I heard um, about, I heard a bit about that on the Ash podcast there. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, but, I still uh, haven't watched the Mandalorian. I, I don't know. I'm a little, I don't know. I, I'm sure it's good. Everybody says it's good, but like I've, I've kind of been turned off by several of the last star Wars movies and stuff. So I'm sure I'll have, get to it eventually. Have you seen since they've started with the Disney ones yet? Like rogue one and all that. Um, I think rogue one was actually kind of a high point for me. I kind of liked rogue one. But mm. the the sequel trilogy I didn't love mostly, and mm -hmm. ha the Han Solo one, the Solo one I can't remember if I liked that one or didn't like that one. Mm. And then I'm trying to think there was one more I want to say I can't remember what it was though. Mm. There there have been a, there's been a lot of content and there's a lot of content being promised, but <laughs> Star Wars I think Star Wars' problem is that they've got a really expansive universe that was pretty well detailed in the first series but mm -hmm. they can only tell one kind of story which is like the hero journey mm -hmm. they can't tell any other kind of story except that it always has to be a jedi and there always has to be a dark jedi a sith against them and so they're really locked into this one story mode and it's really getting lame like i think the original trilogy they showed enough in that in that original trilogy about this universe that not everything in this universe is about the, you know, the galactic civil war, mm -hmm. you know, not everything is about the Jedi and the Sith, but in the movies, that's all they're concerned about. Mm -hmm. So it's very frustrating. So I, I don't know. People say the Mandalorian's different and better. And so I'll check it out at some point. And I hope it is, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I was uh, interested to, hear people's opinions about it because i haven't been following the series at all so i just wanted to make sure it wasn't something where i had to see all the movies or whatever up until now to like get what was going on because i'm not <laughs> i'm not trying to invest like i haven't i, I checked out after uh, the prequels honestly i haven't been back so 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the sequels were better than the prequels. I'll say that, but they okay. weren't great. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're still worth watching, I guess, if you want to see. I mean, like, my God, you know, um, Princess Leia died in real life. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of ought to, <laughs> you know, check it out. Yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, yeah. Um, not great. <laughs> I didn't think. Oh, uh, I got yeah. a Kindle for Christmas. That was one thing that happened. I'm excited. Okay. So you can read books on there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've okay. been downloading public domain classics, so I'm reading some uh, Charles Dickens right now. I, yeah, I remember reading uh, The Christmas Carol in high school and thinking it was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a good writer. I like uh, a <laughs> controversial statement from <laughs> Charles Dickens. That guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, Bob. I know. Hot takes. Coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this this uh, podcast can take that kind of controversy. <laughs> I don't need that kind of heat. <laughs> I don't know if they're on um, on the. I think one of the best books I've read in my life, I think, is Graham Greene's uh, *The Quiet American*. Hmm. Have you seen the movies or read that book at all, or not? No. Mm-mm. Okay, it's a very, very, very smart book. Mm. Um, it's. Uh, I've got a copy of it around here somewhere, and I've got another one, *Our Man in Panama*. I think it was called another of mm. his books, but I haven't read it yet. But this book was written in the 1950s, and it basically de- details a love triangle between an aging British man named Fowler, mm. a young American man named Pyle, and a Vietnamese woman named Fong, and this kind of love triangle that happens. And it's actually, it's not as simple as that, actually. It's it's much more deep. It's actually a story about, it, it's, it goes on two levels. It works on the human level. And then it also mm-hmm. works on the level of uh, imperialism. And it's talking about how uh, Europe and England represent the old version of uh, colonialism, and then how America represents an up-and-coming colonial power. And it was written in the 1950s, but it basically dial- de- uh, details what's going to happen over the next decade and a half in, in the Vietnam War with America with America hmm. replacing uh, France in, in Indochina at that time. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just an incredibly smart book and it, it deals with like Catholicism and fidelity and marriage and love and hate, and hmm. you know, nationalism. I mean, it just deals with all kinds of stuff. It's a really, really, really smart book. Yeah. Cool. I'll check that out. Yeah. Ash and I set a reading goal of 25 books for each of us. So <laughs> seems like a yeah. doable amount at least. Yeah, ever since my falling out with my book club, I haven't read any books. I tried to read that book, uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And I got about halfway through it, but then I just kind of like <laughs> stopped reading for some reason, even though I was kind of enjoying it bit by bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe I'll pick it up again before this vacation time is over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw the movies, or at least the first one, I think. <laughs> Because it was directed by David Fincher, but I didn't really care for it. Oh, I thought it was an outstanding movie. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch it again. It was really, really good, I thought. Um, and I, actually, I watched that one, and I watched the original Swedish one, and then I started watching the second Swedish one, but I didn't finish it. And then there, apparently there was a sequel, The Girl with Something Spider or Something Spiders or Something. Mm. I don't remember, but it was a different actress, different director. It was garbage. It was absolute garbage. So mm. David Fincher, I'm very angry at right now because he's canceled Mindhunter, basically. I never saw Mindhunter. Is good? Outstanding show. Mm. The first two seasons, the first season especially, and the second season also are outstanding. But he's just kind of like, oh, you know, I want to focus on movies right now, so I'm going to release all the, the actors from their contracts so they can do something else if they want. They don't got shit else to do. This was their big thing, David Fincher. <laughs> selfish motherfucker (laughs) it was an outstanding show about the study of uh the kind of the study of serial killers by the fbi starting in like the 60s and 70s basically the 70s and 80s basically huh and i actually read the the autobiography that it was based on by the guy who actually kind of started this this study of serial killers and stuff and it was an interesting read and Mm -hmm. the book you know and the story was really good they'd set it up to go into the you know 
they'd set it up to go forward quite a ways. They'd set it up that they were kind of following BTK as well, who didn't get caught oh, yeah. until we were in university. I remember that. I actually was uh, going to, I bookmarked a, uh, it was like a 2020 documentary about the BTK killer because like his daughter was uh, being interviewed about it. So yeah. one thing I always remember about him is that his wife got an emergency divorce after <laughs> after it came out. And it's like, yeah, I, I guess that's fair. You know, it's like, let's speed <laughs> this one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a that's an emergency. He was a oh, terrible yeah. person. Big big emergency. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So um yeah. So the, the, but they were teasing something with that from like from season mm-hmm. one up through season two. They were teasing that this guy was out there operating and stuff. And they were, you know, they were aware of some of the things that had happened, but they hadn't started tracking down. And we know he doesn't get caught until like two thousand four, two thousand five, around that time. And so this this show had built in a timeline where it was going to go up to the modern day. And I'm almost questioning if like David Fincher isn't trying to do kind of a twin peaks thing where he's going to come back after 25 years when the actors have aged up to the appropriate age. And then he's going to have them like catch BTK 25 years later or some shit, you know, you know, that's my optimistic view, Hmm. (laughs) but the, the first season was outstanding. The, the interviews, it's all about interviews with serial killers, basically. They, they do interviews with different kinds of serial killers. And there's this one serial killer that they interview who is just, you know, an he, this guy's an acting colossus. He's outstanding. Mm. Um, and and uh, and some of the other ones are a little flaky and stuff and this and that. But but based on that, that basically the first episode is kind of boring. But the second episode and the third episode, when they start interviewing this guy, that's when you get wrapped in big time. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think Ash would like this show a lot too. She kind of likes that that darker stuff too. Yeah. No, so I've, I, I was I've never I've never taken the plunge, but I'll 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 check it out. That sounds like a good show. Oh but. yeah, yeah. This guy Edmund Kemper is the name of the serial killer, but the actor mm. who plays him does a really good job. And this guy, like, I mean, the interview with him, he's he's just like very forthcoming with him. He kind of like he has a thing for people in authority. He has a thing for police and like authority figures, and so he. <clears throat> kind of wants to be their friend and everything. And so he just shares like bizarre shit with them and stuff. And it's just, it just creates this really weird dynamic. Hmm. It's uh, and it's, it's based on real interviews that you can actually watch on YouTube. The real guy was like this. This is exactly what he was wow. like. So huh. it's, it's an outstanding acting job. It's an outstanding directing job. It tells a great story. It's, it's very, very good. It's kind of like, I mean, if you liked, you know, if you like Silence of the Lambs, this is kind of like that. It's mm-hmm. got that kind of a creepy vibe. That's cool. So I'm very angry at David Fincher right now. And I, <laughs> and I watched Tenet, and so I'm even more angry at David Fincher. Uh, what was Tenet? Tenet. His new movie or whatever, right? Oh, that was the one that just came out, you mean? Yeah. Didn't okay. love it. Huh. <laughs> so... Wait, wait, no, no, that's Christopher Nolan. Oh, shit, sorry. I get those guys confused. Mm-hmm, I see why. Well, if David Fincher <laughs> wants to make movies like Tenet, then I discourage him, I encourage him to go back to TV. <laughs> I'm disappointed in Christopher Nolan again. I liked, uh, uh, I don't know, I think uh, Christopher Nolan's done some good work. I mean, I, I don't, has he made a bad movie before this? I don't he's been pretty consistent. I didn't love the, uh... What was it? The the Dark Knight Rises or whatever, the one with Bane. I didn't love that one. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I hated that movie. That was awful. And frankly, yeah. you know, we all we all liked the Joker or whatever in his movie. But at the, the same Knight. time, like, I, I feel like I feel like was that the Dark Knight? That was the Dark Knight, right? That was the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. The Dark Knight was pretty good. But at the same time, I feel like the people who love Dark Knight the most were the kind of bros who never watched Heat you know? And so they didn't realize like the whole <laughs> bank robbery and all that shit that was straight up ripped off from heat in 1995. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like that was part of the democratic demographic that was really big on the dark night. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you see the uh, newer Joker movie? Um, just, was it called Joker? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was on a date last year with a woman. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I missed my line. Yeah, good job, Chad. 
<laughs> yeah. I wanted to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but she's, she read some reviews in Korea that said it wasn't very romantic or some shit or something. So we ended up watching Joker, which I knew was a mistake. Because I knew, like, if, if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is not romantic, I know Joker's <laughs> not going to be romantic. And it wasn't. No. So, yeah. I did not love it. I, I, I feel like Joaquin Phoenix ribs did a lot of the acting for him. So... <laughs> He's, like, he, he's just kind of like look at all this weight i lost look at me like dance around in my apartment with my ribs oh give me an oscar <laughs> like, no didn't love it yeah i don't know it wasn't great i thought yeah i didn't think it was that good either i mean it was an interesting take on the whole batman thing because it didn't seem to care that much about the rest of like the you don't know canonical whatever it just seemed like kind of more of a standalone and you know if they can get, if they can get Joaquin Phoenix to recommit for another couple of movies they'll they'll make the whole universe in that's in that's in that vein right but hmm. he doesn't want to do it he's an he's an auteur he's an artiste or whatever so he doesn't want to do sequels okay hmm. and that's fine I'm I don't care <laughs> you know have you know, have whoever's going to play Batman now, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Pattinson or whoever, whatever. Yeah, uh, right. You know, I don't care. Do what you want to do, but <laughs> I may or may not watch them. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I don't think we've talked about it yet, but did you, uh, did you want to talk about the movie Borat? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I watched that movie. Yeah. Borat too. too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was good. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, I don't know. It was like a little bit gross and stuff. Mm -hmm. At times, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's uh, the I mean the uh, <laughs> the utter destruction of Rudy Rudy Giuliani was enjoyable to watch. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, my dear. Nice to meet you. You are one of my greatest heroes. Oh, oh that's so nice. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. I will try my best. But because I'm super excited and nervous... I'm... Well, you relax. I'll relax. You want me to ask you questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'll relax you, okay? Yes, thank you. I feel like I'm living in a fairy tale. Right. Right. You're going to do great, okay? So, please take this. It used to belong to my father, but I think you should keep it. it oh, my God, that's wonderful that you gave this to me. So... Uh, well, thank you, my dear. A little bit about China. As an expert of national security, what do you think we can do going forward to prevent this from happening again? Well, well China manufactured the virus and let it out. And they deliberately spread it all around the world. I don't think anybody was eating bats. Yeah. Did you ever have a bat? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever <laughs> eat a bat. If you eat a bat with me. Okay, I will. I'll eat a bat with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> so, probably in a rough estimate, how many lives President Trump saves? I'd say he saved a million lives. It would have been a million more had he had he waited that month the way the Democrats would have done. Yeah. Uh, but he acted swiftly. He acted before anybody. In fact, even his own, even his own advisors, some of them advised really? him not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. You're a little bit. This is good. You go. Yeah. It's always good. <laughs> Never been in front of the camera. I've always been behind of the camera, but today something uh, with I this. I think you're going to look pretty good. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you're going to look pretty but good. But it's because of you. Well, thank you. I really feel like Melania right now. Well, you're doing very well. <laughs> you're going to look pretty Sorry good. Sorry to interrupt, Mayor. Uh, sound problem. I think we cancel interview. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we need. Uh, yeah, what do I do? I've already mic. checked. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, that's a bit better. Let me just listen in for a bit. Yeah. Is she asking too many questions? No, she's doing great. She'd make a very nagging wife. No. Oh. If I were you, I would stick to marrying your cousins. Let me check the sound. Can I check the sound? Sure. Mr. Mayor, can, can you say something? Can you say something? 
Yes, I'm fine. Yeah, the sound is perfect. It's probably please, better please, if I stay please. in. No, no, please. If I need you, I will call you. Sure. You will be in the lobby, right? I'm so sorry. That's yeah, horrible. Sit, 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 sit. Okay. I'm so sorry for that. Really, I apologize. The apology accepted. No problem. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Uh, thank you again for uh, giving me this time. Shall we have a drink in the bedroom? Come here. Come here. What? what happened? There you go, my dear. Okay. There you go. You can give me your phone number and your address. Should we slip your jacket? Okay. Put down your crumb. Oh. She's 15. She's too old for you. Wait, 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 she, why are you just no, like she's my daughter. Please, take me instead. Take my anus. Don't want she, no, no, take my anus. Do not have her. I'm better than him. No, I better. My back pussy very tight. No, please. My front oh my anus. Please, I will let you enjoy my heart in your please, mouth. Please, please, please. No, I better. I, I would love to I was in you. prison many years, so I have techniques with my mouth. Hello, what's going on here? Look at this guy. I forbid this union. Rudy, Trump will be disappointed. You are leaving hotel without golden shower. But everything else, I got to say, was a little bit like a little bit uncomfortable and cringe. I yeah. know that's kind of his thing, but it's just kind of like, I don't know. You know, I think he gets away with it because it's America. But like the thing is, you know, like, you know, going to the, the debutantes ball or whatever and like making fun of a you know, yeah. like historical cultures, you know, coming of age rituals. Like, you can get away with it because it's America and they're Southern mm -hmm. and there's the implication they might be kind of racist or sexist or something. But, like, if you went into any traditional culture in the world and you just made fun of how they bring up their ch young people or whatever, right? it's going to look pretty cringe if it's not America, I think. It's yeah. going to be like, oh, my God, you do this? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, why don't you treat your daughters like regular people? Oh. It's like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It yeah. was a little – and, like, the thing with the period blood and stuff or whatever, I was like – Come on. I mean, this is, this is, this is disgusting. Come on. You're just, you're just trying to gross people out at this point. It's like, right. I don't know. I, I respect what he's, what he's done as far as coming after the Trump administration and stuff. And he says he's going after Zuckerberg next, which I'm excited about actually, because I think Mark Zuckerberg needs to be taken down a few pegs. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just like, I, I'm, I'm up for some cringe, but like that was a lot of cringe. So, Yep. Yeah, no, the first the first Borat was just such like I was just in shock at how funny it was. Like it was just like such maybe it was just like I had never seen anything like it before. But yeah, I guess this was a little bit less shocking, I guess, just because I was a little bit more prepared for it, I guess. But yeah, I mean, there was a lot of shocking and disgusting stuff in the first Borat, too, I think. But yeah, I mean, he's a funny guy, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's like I watched it once. I don't feel a need to watch it again. No, right? no, so, no. Yeah, absolutely. But. Yeah. I mean, there's not there's not a story there that I really care about. You know, it's like, right. OK, so, yeah. Anyways, anyways, it was I mean, it was it was uh, it was bold filmmaking as far as bringing somebody into America who was English was not her first language and. She's being put in these situations where, you know, there's a there, there's a borderline chance that she may get molested by, you know, the president's <laughs> lawyer. I mean, there's a certain gonzo quality to that. But at the same time, it's like, is it responsible? I mean, <laughs> I know everybody talked about what a good job she did, but it's like, is that responsible, actually? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He was just tucking his shirt in, Charlie. Leave, leave the man alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's... <laughs> What did he do? Two weeks after that, he caught COVID and shit, and he had all then, kinds of problems. Then he had the hair dye leaking down his face, and he farted in front of, like, the congressional hearing. <laughs> the answer that I gave you is they didn't bother to interview a single witness. Just like you, they don't want to know the truth. It's not part of that. Well, I, I, will, I, will, I will ask that he be, he be disciplined for that. First of all, first of all. Hold on. Let's, fir first of all. That's graceful. <laughs> yeah, this guy, you know, like back in 2002, like he was America's mayor. Untouchable. Look at him now. Yeah. Disgraceful. <laughs> yeah.
And like, I mean, and you see the, like the thing where like he and he and Donald Trump were like cross-dressing or something, or he was cross-dressing and Donald Trump kissed him or something back in the day at WWE or some shit. You know, you're really beautiful. And a woman that looks like that has to have her own special scent. Oh, thank you. Maybe, maybe you could tell me what you think of this scent. Hmm, I like that. This, this may be the best of all. Oh, you dirty boy, you! Oh, oh! Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. Hmm. You can't say I didn't try. These two clowns have been fucking around with each other for like 30 years or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he never thought in his, his wildest dreams that Donald Trump was going to be the president. <laughs> now that he is, it's like... <laughs> they drag each other down. It's uh, it's pretty wild. <laughs> well, uh, I probably ought to wrap up here soon and get uh, back to work. But uh, any uh, any uh, last words about the Georgia runoffs before tomorrow um, or the vote for certification on Wednesday? <laughs> um, Georgia, if you want two thousand dollars. <laughs> Vote for the Democrats. You want that stimmy? If you don't want to see the six hundred dollars that was already promised you, and you don't want to see any more money for the next four years, vote for the, <laughs> either one of the Republicans. Take your pick. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you want to see functioning, if you want to see the Republic survive, vote for the Democrats. If you want to see any other crazy shit after the last year we've had, vote for the Republicans. <laughs> That's you know, you know, hear me now. You know, thank me later. That's what I'm going to say about that. You're welcome, Georgia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck around. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what I would say. I'm a little bit worried because I think there was some uh, ticket splitting during the presidential thing. Some people were voting for Trump and then voting for the Republicans down ballot. So mm-hmm. I'm a little bit worried about that. But these people need to get to get their heads on straight, you know. You want to defeat Trumpism, you can't leave a single Republican who was here during the Trump period, except mm-hmm. maybe Mitt Romney, anywhere near power. <laughs> That's the only way we're going to get things back to normal. Yeah, I, I know I'm going to be talking like Lucy with the football here, but wouldn't it be interesting if Mitt Romney switched parties or stopped caucusing with the Republicans? That would be something. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath for any you know, yeah. Republican to do the right thing here. I know. Oh, um, I saw a story earlier today about um, there's an African-American woman who used to be the lead singer of uh, Black Eyed Peas, apparently. And she has called out Will I Am about him complaining about them being treated as a pop group rather than a hip hop group. And she said, well, I left the group in like 2000. And then two years later, you replaced me with a white girl and stuff. And like, so how can you huh. claim to be a hip hop group at that point or something? And so there's this big scandal now with that. I hadn't heard about that. I didn't realize they had a pre Fergie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was. Remember. So wow. it's interesting because I, I never, you know, we, we both came up during that whole Black Eyed Peas time and I never loved the Black Eyed Peas. Mm-hmm. They had some catchy songs at times, but I never really like got with their music and stuff. And, you know, I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting that they wanted to be treated as hip hop when they were clearly, clearly, clearly way over the pop line, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were, had a very strange career, because they started out as, like, an underground, you know, hip-hop collective, I think, and then obviously moved completely in a different direction, but. <clears throat> yeah, I did some research on them earlier today, and, like, one of the founding members was, he's, like, Afro-Filipino or something, his... Mother, he was he was born in the Philippines. His mother was Filipina, and like then he was brought over to America somehow and stuff by the Pearl S. Buck Foundation or something to house like children of American soldiers overseas or something to bring them back to America. And, but you know he grew up in the Philippines, and then his younger brother was murdered over there or something by you know love triangle or something. It, it's a really you know it's not so simple as black and white even with black eyed peas. It's pretty complex. So. It's kind of mm-hmm. interesting, but um, yeah. Anyways, that was another headline that caught my eye. Uh, hold on, Bob. Let me see if I can give you some. Uh, oh, song. 
Yep. Songs, Bob, you Music never asked me about songs I'm listening to. I'm okay, just about these to, days, bro. I've been banging Paris Hilton's uh, <laughs> Even the Stars Are Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, wasn't that what it's called? I don't. Why are you asking me? I have no idea. You were there, Bob. I was there. I was, you were there. I, I existed. I wouldn't say I was paying attention to Paris Hilton's music career. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't. <laughs> Uh, hold on. Yeah, the 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 star. Hold on one second. Let me let me check my Shazam, Bob. I gotta check my Shazam to find out what You're the good things are. Here. <laughs> um, my music. Okay, Shazam's. Ba 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 ba. Okay. Um. Okay. Wow. Okay, wow, there's a lot of music here. Um, okay, um, one song that I've been listening to is the Jim Carroll song. Uh, the Jim Carroll band, People Who Died... Oh, yeah, I remember that from the uh, Dawn of the Dead remake that we played over the credits. I remember that. Yeah, it's a good song. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. I don't know. <laughs> people who died. morbid, but around New Year's <laughs> these days, I often think about people who have died that we know. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting song. It reminds sure. me of Butthole Surfer's uh, Pepper song yep. also, which almost seems like Pepper could have been inspired by this song. Um. Another song that I heard recently when I was watching, um, actually, um, the uh, Mr. Robot, which was a song by the singer FKA Twigs, who is in, you know, she's in in the in the spotlight these days for accusing um, what's his name, Transformers boy. You know who I'm talking about? Oh, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf or whatever. Mm -hmm. She's accusing him of, like, domestic violence, physical abuse, verbal abuse, infecting with an STD knowingly, like, all kinds of crazy shit. Mm. I've been saying for years this guy's a garbage human being, and I don't see what anybody sees in him. But, like, now it sounds like people are starting to recognize and stuff. But she actually has a really great song called Two Weeks. It's a very, like, sexy tune. you got to check it out. Very good oh, song. Wow. Two Weeks by FKA Twigs. And hold on, let me find one more song. One song I'm always curious about is Kenny G's Songbird. You're always curious about this? I've always been curious about this song. <laughs> Why are you curious about it? <laughs> I, I, I feel like there was something like, you, you play this song. Bob, you got you to figure out, you got to make your, your podcast big enough that you can actually play these songs in the background or something. When you're mentioning them and stuff. You got to figure out how to do that. That that idiot, uh, what's his name, um, on uh, Angry Americans or whatever, Paul Rykoff, he, he like puts all kinds of licensed music all over his podcast. He's a garbage <laughs> human being. So um, you got to figure well, out. I want to be just that. like him. <laughs> <laughs> He's very successful. Um, but yeah, I mean, Songbird. I feel like Songbird by Kenny G. I feel like this was like a late '80s, early '90s kind of like you know. <laughs> boomers idea at that time of what was artistic and you know freewheeling music or something you know mm. and i i feel like it has not been recognized that way by anybody else mm -mm. and so i'm kind of like i want to like i want to see a deep dive documentary about kenny g someday like i want to know <laughs> what was this guy's deal what was he trying to do what did he accomplish <laughs> who is his target audience he apparently, he, I think he was like the Nora Jones or Nora, whatever, the don't know why, you know, I mean, that everyone had that album. I think he was like the pre, like the soft jazz that kind of just permeated the culture at the, at it's the time. It's extremely you know? soft jazz. It's like just like oh, the yeah. soft jazz. And I mean, obviously, <laughs> he's got some artistic, you know, musical ability, but it's just like this is, you know... <laughs> You know, you had you had a platform to say something to the world, and this is Songbird is what you came up with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So that that's an interesting one. Um, probably there's some probably like some Korean songs I could probably give too, but I don't know. Um, yeah, those three I guess are just to start us off with or whatever. So. <laughs> 
Well, that's good. Yes, I'll make a point to ask you your music recommendations, Charles. So come come prepared next time. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, what's what's going on with uh, MF Doom or whatever? Uh, he died apparently way back in October, but they just announced it, or his wife just yeah, announced it on Instagram. Yeah, that seems like really wacky to me. I'm like, waiting for the full story on that. I've been a fan of this guy, right? I, you yes. know, I, don't, I I gotta be honest, I'm not one of those guys that doesn't know his music that well, but I remember, you know, when you came back from England or whatever, you were kind of into this guy. Well, he was, a, he was born in England, and then I believe he got denied entry back into America in like 2010, and I think he's been living there ever since, but... Um, anyway, yeah, no, I, I would put him in my top five rappers ever, and, and that's for years. I've been a fan, as you know, but... Well, hey, Bob, yeah, hold that thought one second. Okay, sorry, my morning alarms are still going off, even though I'm not working. <laughs> on, a normal, on a normal Tuesday morning, I'd be waking up right now. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I, I, I'm always telling Captain that you're, you, he's always asking what t- time it is in Korea and if you're going to sleep or waking up. And I guess I've l- been lying to him that you've been going to sleep when you have. <laughs> no, I've, been, I've been staying up all night these days. It's oh, disastrous. Wow. I, I'm actually relieved that they extended the lockdown so I wouldn't because I was not ready to start waking up at a normal hour. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been staying up until like 9 a.m. every day. Oh, my God. Sleeping till four or five. It's crazy. Woo. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> How are you going to get back into the swing if this, if this long time? <laughs> I don't know. I, I've got two more weeks to figure it out, but i got to do something. <laughs> so, yeah. No, but I, I read, like, that MF Doom was, like, he was kind of a member of kind of a wacky cult religion or something, too, though, right? Uh, I think it was tangentially related to the Five Percenters, which I believe the Wu-Tang Clan is also somewhat affiliated with. But I think he and his brother must have grown up in this church or near this church or around people in this church or something, because it seemed like a very specifically New York thing, because, you know, Wu-Tang Clan's from New York, too. So I assume there's just like a community of like, and there's a lot of hip hop terms that come from Five Percenter culture. Uh, or not culture, it's a religion, but you know what I mean. Uh, and so uh, it's it's like it's it's kind of a uh, yeah, it, it's kind of culty, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. But it, re- it's, I it's very it's, it's adjacent it. It to the nation like of the Islam. Black Isra- yeah, it sounded kind of like that black Israelite stuff, though. Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. I think it's kind of nation of Islam adjacent, as, as I understand it, but. Anyway, at ly- lyrically though, MF Doom, I'd put him up against almost anybody. He's so amazing. I just I can listen to his songs again and again, and always get something new out of the phrases he puts together. So, huh. yeah, I gotta say it's pretty wacky though. He died like on on Halloween. They didn't announce it until after New Year's. That's pretty wacky, I gotta say. Well, and then you know to add to the mystery, he has been known to have concerts where he's supposed to show up and then. It's an imposter lip syncing. So I almost wonder, you know, could this be an Andy Kaufman esque stunt again? You know what I mean? Like, who knows? Like, I get, I mean, I guess it's real as far as I know, but he's pulled some other uh, things like that in the past. So who knows? Hmm. Okay. Well, interesting. Well, condolences because I know he was somebody that you listened to. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You got to check it out. He's good. But. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do. All right. Well, Bob, t- wish and kiss the kiss the babies for me and <laughs> you know tell Ash I said hello and uh oh, well. Yeah. I'm I'm really hopeful that I'll get back to America if we get this thing locked down. I mean, if I get vaccinated, I could basically come back and do whatever I want, but Yeah. Uh, at the same time like we've been off work for a month and a half in Korea here and so I don't know if my boss is be pretty kosher with me, you know. Even though I was supposed to get a vacation like at the beginning of 2020, I'm not sure he's going to be pretty kosher with me taking a vacation at any time in 2021 when we're trying to get, you know, the hog one back to business and everything. Mm. So we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, definitely we'll keep a place open for you if you come back. And don't worry, the road between Bloomington and Indianapolis will still be torn up by the time you get here, no matter when that is. <laughs> yeah, I might as well just fly into Indy and <laughs> stay there for a couple of weeks and then, like, fly down to Louisville and drive up to Mitchell or some shit. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more efficient. So Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, good talk there, Bob. Sorry I'm cool. all over the place and stuff, but, yeah, no, it's, it's right. been a wild vacation, so. 
Well, yeah. get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. Keep an eye on Georgia, people. Georgia listeners, vote vote Democrat in Georgia. Ossoff Absolutely. and uh, the other guy's name. Warnock. Warnock, yeah. Vote for them. Do it. Just do it. You'll thank me later. Um, and, uh, yeah. And get ready for, you know, 2021. Absolutely. If democracy survives, things might start improving here pretty soon. Stay Maybe. tuned on the next yeah, stay tuned on the next episode to find out <laughs> how this one turns out. <laughs> yeah. Throw Donald Trump's ass in jail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do All it. right, well uh <laughs> have a good morning slash night show. <laughs> All right, yep, you too, Bob. Have All a right. good day at work. Later on. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Join the Rob Burgess Show mailing list. Go to tinyletter.com forward slash the Rob Burgess Show and type in your email address. Then respond to the automatic message. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review everywhere the podcast is available, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, RSS, and now Spotify. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. If you have something to say, record a voice memo on your smartphone and send it to therobburgessshow at gmail.com. Include voice memo in the subject line of the email. Also, if you want to call or text the show for any reason, the number is 317-674-3547. Until next time.